Hi and welcome to another video from me, Christopher at DBG. So we've started our Orc campaign this month with October. Now I've just seen the most amazing trailer at Games Workshop. If you haven't seen it, we shared it on our page. Have a look. It's from the community page about Orcs and the Orcs don't need to fly. I think it's brilliant. Bit of kick in the nuts um, for Blood Angel players out there or anyone that you smash captains at tournaments, but they blown it out of the water, it's amazing. You've seen some of the Orc speeders that have come out, I think they're amazing too. We're going to start off by starting, um, well we started off by building this lovely bunker, it's just a Dakar bunker from Tabletop Scenics. Just on the finishing touches, I didn't quite finish on the overall video which was just adding in some spikes, as you can see, just to make some more definition in the in the scenery. And as you can tell, it is it's amazing. It is absolutely amazing. I love this piece of scenery. Um, I think it's already up there at the top, and I'm really looking forward to painting it. The fact is, I know it can dry brush and wash really well, so it'll be quite easy and quite quick to paint. But just because of the level of detail, everything will get picked up on it. Now for this piece of scenery, I did really think of just continuing sort of the bunker theme and going for the stronghold line. And then I thought, do you know what? I want to do, I've done that, I want to, probably this build is going to be very similar to that. Um, and I'll make another video on this. And I thought, do you know what? I want to do something a little bit more exciting. Not too exciting. I mean, we've still got this beauty, the Orc Custom Workshop to build. Um, where they're obviously making all these fantastic speeders. And I thought, do you know what? I've got two buildings. I'm going to do your barracks, which I really like the curve of that. It'd be interesting and very different to that one. Then we've got the orc quarters as well. I'm sorry if I'm getting, I'm getting a reflection on eye of the camera and the set of things, so I apologize about that. I think out of the two, I'm going with barracks. Just because it'll fit the theme of my army. I'm Massive into horde. Gonna build the barracks today. Really looking forward to it. Let's get it open. Let's see exactly what's in it. Uh, it's got moderate rating of difficulty of three, which is exactly the same as on this. So in theory, it's just a larger scale of that. Has the instructions online. Um, and they give you a nice little scanning code from Tabletop Cynics. Um, but if it's anything like, like like the last one, it'll have yeah, it'll have the uh, building building instructions inside as well. Okay, so some of these are, du are double, double lettered. So we have G and H build. Now, take a look, scenics. If you notice, all of the pieces of scenery are numbered, and they've got quite big numbers on these ones, unlike the barricade. And this is D and C. So they're numbered for the reason is it will say on the instructions C12 and D11, for example. So you'd find the sprue number and find the associated number with that piece of MDF as well. And we have E and B. And it's hard to tell what all the bits are. Or you see, so some of the level of detail is just amazing. Now I can only imagine that this is going to be very similar. And it's a very similar style of their builds, their general terrain is what I sort of defined before as the blanket approach. So you have your duvet and you have your blanket. You know, one goes over the top, they're both fine as they are, but combined it 
it's a wonderful thing sleeping in there. And this is no exception. They layer it and layer it, the piece of scenery. It just becomes more and more three dimensional, not flat in any shape or form. It makes it more of a tricky build. It makes it more, you've got to have some patience, but the results are far better. And that is A and J. Now the letters don't represent when you use them. I think that could be the structure at the top of where people are looking at, or where orcs will be pointing out and looking out. So let's get the instructions. Let's see what it says, just so you can get a little bit overview. That's it, the instructions are on. Okay, so you do get a nice little handbook. Definitely a lot more phases in this one compared to the other one. There was 12. This one has 30. But they're very, you know, they're small stages. They really, really help you sort of going forward. I think the instructions are very, very clear. So. See, you've got the numbers, they don't represent the order they go in, they represent the number on the sprue and then the letter associates with the sprue number. So we'll build a couple bits at a time. Section 7, right going 30 in the middle bit as well. And in theory, once it's all done, ooh, should look like one of those on the left. I'm looking forward to building this. It'd be very interesting. I like the fact that it's already, you know, it's got a structure on the top that's higher, and then it's got a structure on top of the barracks itself and the curvature of the barracks. I think it's, I think that's really interesting, and it's quite hard to get with MDF, but. You can, I think you can get away with orc, orc buildings being in sort of that rugged stage. I mean, you just got to take this building, you know, even though it is just a barricade. The fact that it's in, you look at the back, even the back of it, you know, you've got the door, you've got the rustic, you've got little bits here, you've got these jagged um, stairs. I think you know, this is the best scenery I've ever built. Um, and I've built a lot of scenery, especially from the MDF. Um, Amazing if they can make it pre painted, um, but I can't see that happening. And sometimes when we pre painted stuff, um, you lose lose your texture, it becomes too flat, especially if it's printed. But hey, um, it could be a nice option. So I'm going to build a couple of sections, see how far we get. I'll show you if I come up with any problems and stuff, then I'll show you. If it's pretty easy, then I'll build, keep building little bits, and then I'll just do an overview. Of the last section as it were hope you really enjoy this if you haven't checked out the previous video of this it goes with the um, giveaway from pen um, pen dragon have a look at that um, the closing date of that is the 13th and then I announce everything on the 14th so got a little bit of time but check the video out this is all going to be as a series of our terrains and um, series 2 I'm really looking forward to this. <laughs> I was going to say, let's get a war on. That already sounds weird. <laughs> let's get a rock structure in and let's start building this org city. Um, all of this is just going to be combined into one. Um, and even the things that I've shown you, I've still got more in a box as well from Tabletop Cinex that they've given me to review. So, big shout out for them. Go and like their pages. Go and have a look at the stuff. They're really reasonable priced as well. Um, fantastic so let's get building let's see what problems I come up with and hopefully you don't come up with the same that I've done or in theory hopefully it's a really smooth build really easy and I'll be able to just show you it and go it's perfect don't even worry about anything hi so we're at stage four yep stage four at uh, the build now and you see it's actually Looking quite cool as a bunker. 
can see it's already adding the 3D elements as some of the inside of the windows are getting their little features. And bunker, you know, for some MDF stuff, this is done and complete. We know for a while this is tabletop sort of cynics, after all, this is going to go bigger, better, loads of elements in there. Now, stage one, I did by did reasonably well, which was just putting in the windows. Stage two, I thought I'd give it a go, and then got to stage three, which was a slats on top. And because stage two is really just sticking it to the base, building box MDF scenery, you know, like squares, rectangles, those sort of you know, box shape. We came to quickly realise that actually stage three, stage two, wasn't great. So I skipped stage two, went to straight stage three, dry fritted everything first, because the numbers look really cool because they come from they all numbered though, going one, one to twelve, all next to each other. So I made sure everything was lined up perfectly. Did this side first, did the slats in, did the middle made sure the slats fitted the middle, did the end, made sure the slats fitted the end and then when it's a little bit more dry, a little bit more stable because all the slats have got three, three contact points, then I did the bait, then I did stage two. So that's my biggest device so far, so I said stage one, then stage three, then stage four, then stage two and this is, you know, it's really solid now. Biggest thing, dry fit it first. Just make sure you get those numbers right in place. It's going across all three of the contact points, you know, the end, the middle, and the start. That's the most important thing so far. Next stage is doing what looks like quite a complicated door, and but I'm sure it'll look quite smart when it's done. And then that will go on the end of here, I believe. I'm going to do that part, um, and then once done that, show you what that door sort of looks like. And then I'm going to call it a night. Um, that's pretty much what I'm going to do. Obviously, it's not a night for you. Continue watching, and then you'll see the whole process from start to finish. Hope you're enjoying it so far. I know it's sort of little stages, but actually, this type of scenery. Yeah, stuck on me. This type of scenery you do need to take your time for, and you do need those, you know, sometimes those overnight dry points as well. Um, I think with the amount of structure and fiddling that's going to go happen into this one piece of scenery already, I need to make sure that this part is solid before I start moving on to the next stuff. So I'm going to start doing that door, and um, that will end that part, and then we'll start stage seven in the morning, well, probably in late evening maybe, don't know yet, um, but for you it's just a continuous video, so keep watching, hope you enjoy so far. Okay, so I finished the door, hey that's a lot of detail, just the door piece itself, what's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eleven ish pieces, and that's just referring to this bit, so pay loads of attention to detail I mean look at it the skull the little vents even the window here look here there's a circle bit that just goes in just to add that little bit more depth into it retail now it's time to take shape this belongs to orcs I, I'm impressed with it Next stage is starting something completely different, so I'm going to leave it for the night, make sure the glue's all dry, and then work on the next parts. This is section seven, there's the doorway. About a third, a third there on the instructions. Next part is adding things to the sides and stuff like that, so I'm looking forward to that, add some more more depth to the actual building itself. There's so much detail on here. Um, can't wait to add more. I'm going to call it there. Um, but for you guys, just carry on watching. You'll see the next parts of the video. Um, right here. 
um, I've got loads of sleep to catch up on. Um, I'm going to go to bed. Well, when I wake up, or when I start this again, you'll see the next part of the video. Until then, well, not until then, because for you, when you blink, it's going to be there. For me, it's going to be another couple of hours. So, hope you enjoyed it so far. Hope. I can't hope the scenery is going to be awesome because I already know it is. I um, hope you enjoy what's going to happening. If there's any of the advice and stuff like that you want to go, just throw it in the comments. Um, you know, are you looking forward to the Speed Freaks and stuff like that coming out at the moment? Um, I can see the pictures of it, it's interesting. So the image is from Selesh. That dropped early. That's a good rumour drop there. Um, would Fulgrim come back? Don't know. I'm more looking forward to Orcs in a moment. Um, might be another tournament army. I don't know yet. Um, I've got a spare Leviathan. Maybe that might be Orced up. Let's see. <laughs> um, let's see what's going to happen. See what all the Orc stuff going to do. So, yeah. Impressed with this. It's awesome. Let's get the next things going up. That's what's next Hi, video. So I've had some rest. Uh, so about two days, just because of our busy life. Um, Teddy was free this week, and we just had his party today. So this was the um, Sunday, the sixth, seventh, seventh. It's been a long day, um, so it's not that much hobby time. But everyone's knackered, gone to sleep. Leaves me a little bit of time to do some hobby time. So moving on to the bunker. Um, I'll show you one of the prisons that Teddy got actually, which is just one step away from Warhammer. <laughs> um, so the bunker itself, this was stages from 8 to 15. So the first day is all about this part. And this is one part with any de with no detail on, stuck on, and then you see the detail sort of breaks in the gaps. All quite nice, these nice little scarrings. Sort of like burnt marks, scratch marks, bullet marks, those type of things are an hour layer and they just they just stick on really flat stick on as well. But they add the 3D element in. Also got a nice little walk pattern there as well. Next stage was this thing. Now it suggests that you build it by itself and then stick it on. Now that's brilliant if you want to do elastic bands, hold it in together or see it and hold for a couple of hours. Well, if you have the time for that, brilliant. I don't. Um, so looking at it, logically, I built it to the curve of the barracks and built it that way and then held a bit of weight this way, pushed it along so the weight was here so it wouldn't move and then just left that for about an hour just to stick it in, in place. Next stage was the top which will sit on top of that bit. Uh, I just showed you is the top of the barracks which is just where some people are going to shoot stay get some cover and um, probably like looters and things like that or you know be quite cool on there or just as infiltrating scouts if you're a marine player now when building this it looks really odd because all the details um, are in the inside as you can see you see just a little extra little grip details in here especially like here you've got the little engrave things like that and even onto the what, metal fencing or things like that metal fencing you know what I mean so the reason why it looks odd when you're doing it and you think oh, no, that's not right the details got to be the outside it's because the next stage of this one is quite a big one is that each one of these will get a panel of it which has got the extra level details um, that will give it that extra non-flat look so it actually look like proper proper scenery with an element of depth into it really looking forward to that that's stages 16 to 18 and then after that this thing I'll show you it's still a little bit wet we'll go on there a bit like that and then this will get own little 3D elements onto there as well. 
next stage after that once 3D elements are on there I believe yep so it gets a little bit 3D elements is these bits so each one of these panels is going to be layered up added more depth a lot more scenery a lot more detail and what's really interesting by looking at the diagram um, and the pictures as well is that I think it has like an orc head shape in, um, layered into it which I think will just be will look really cool and really nice to paint um, I'm not too sure how to pack what colors I want to do on these yet because I want to do the whole thing all of them looking very similar so I'm thinking more of like a, a rust you know really rusty um, the odd bits you know one panel blue one panel yellow one panel red um, the orc face is red you know so it still adds a d detail in there but it adds symmetry as well um, I'm not entirely sure um, but looking at the paintings they've done them you know quite dark and sort of just using reds but um, the odd splash of colour and things like that but I really just get it out for you um, so yeah there we go so there you go there's the orc part and you see you know they painted it red those things so I might do like the odd the actual stripe panel blue or, or yellow or you know anything like that really just add that extra little bit of detail which which I think would be quite cool I think it'll be really cool actually um, just to add a bit of difference they've done sort of black and they've done metal effects on the metal panels and stuff um, you know I'm thinking very much the same but adding more colour into it so I'm going to do all the stages getting all the panels done and adding that orc effect in there which I'm really looking forward to and I'm going to show you that what's really key in this is dry fit things first there's a lot of components in these builds even this is moderate difficulty and there's over 66 okay I've seen 66 so I'm picking that number out I'm sure there's more parts but say there's 66 parts you know that's including all the little parts as well it's hard to keep track especially when you've got something um, like this for example just doing this part was over 20 parts 20 15 15 or so parts so just doing that part you know 15 parts on just a window effect is you know keeping track of all that's quite hard so dry fit things first and then relay them the bits out or if you've got like, really good memory then put them in sections at least so but dry fit things first it will save you so much time in the long term you know you're gonna you know if I did all this and then moved on to this part and realize I did something wrong on that the glue's gonna already set and start affecting affecting the bonds and you end up ripping apart and re-gluing and then the MDF's gonna get more and more wet and you know it's gonna lose its effect it's gonna morph and all that sort of stuff so dry fit things first take your time on it they're not easy builds but they're amazing piece of scenery and that's why you know both if you're going to spend money on the scenery, take your time. The last thing you want is wrecking it because you've just been impatient, which I've seen many a times. I've been seeing the tournament scenery like that. I've just been absolutely um, rushed and it looks horrible. So you just take your time on it. Um, it's not a hard build if you take your time. If you rush and just don't do the little things like, you know, dry fitting first and not reading on a little bit like, you know, a couple, a couple of area, um, areas, a couple of sequences in front. You know, I'm not just looking at number ten and eleven. I'm looking at ten to fifteen because that's that section to complete. So do that because at least then you know where you're going and get your next components ready as well. Is really important. So let's move on to the next part, um, and I'll see you soon. And hopefully, we we'll have this orc face on this barracks. So. It's looking like it's almost complete. The next part for me is the tower. I'll show you how far I've got at the moment. The tower is an interesting part because it says it's optional once it's built to be glued or not glued. I'm going to see what it's like because storing this could be quite awkward because it's an awkward shape. This is pretty much the final bit now apart from the tower which is 
that bit on the side. That's what it says it doesn't need to be glued. So whether or not the cat can support itself um, or the fact that it can just be attached to it is a good it would be a quite a good thing actually. I really like the idea of something sort of that you can take on and off and it's optional. I'm not gonna build any more tonight because I'm at a stage where I desperately need this to really dry because I can feel there's quite a lot of glue on it, especially when you're doing supports on the side, the extra detail on the sides, um, it creates more glue than what you would normally do if you have a really flat, you know, one piece MDF. So with that in mind, I'm gonna leave it overnight, dry again, come back in the morning, build a tower, and see where we go from there. But I wanna show you where I'm at at first. So, we built all the details around the top, details on here as well with the extra window parts you still look see quite a bit of the PVA glue let's see this how fresh it is but I just wanted to show you see the org head how cool does that look and org head that way as well funny enough I can see it more when I'm looking at it like this and when I'm staring at it head-on and because I think I'm going a bit MDF blind just by building it. But look at the, the actual orc mouth on that. That is a scary orc mouth. Looking forward to painting that. Look at all the detail on this part as well. On the top. We, ha we had this right at the start and we knew it was going to be a lot of detail involved. I've still got extra spikes and stuff to put on. You know, there's spikes to put on here, etc. But, as you can see, and it's quite weighty as well. You know, there's a lot of MDF on there, especially as you've got multiple layers of MDF because you want to add that detail and the thing with this piece of scenery and with all all of this set in fact is that uh, there's a lot of bits that you pop out so for example is these wooden panels That's the best way of explaining it it's probably the mouth part actually of the orc so you can see it's little bits that look like they're more indented than the others. So the only way, true way of telling those is by turning over MDF where the detail isn't. And then you can see where there's a little lines going round it on the obviously on the un non detailed side. So I've just been using very thin end of a brush. Generally, on some parts, I've been using a, t a 2P piece just to give it some extra level. Um, or blue tack is really good. And you can pop things out of the clippers, but you find if you do that too hard, you actually bend the hole and snap the MDF. But it's, it's still recoverable because you know you're not snapping in loads of parts. You're snapping one part, so it's just gluing two parts together. This is you know easy enough for the majority of the time. But take your time popping these out. They do. I've missed a couple, a couple of times, and I look back going, that doesn't look quite right. So I've gone back home. Yep, yeah, I missed that little little detail. Just pop them out. But I'm really impressed with this piece of scenery so far. I hope you are. I can't wait to build the tower tomorrow. I just really, really, really like it. I mean, so it's time. Where my little one's coughing. They're right. <laughs> um, it's just adding those extra level details that you've done. And just taking your time with it. The whole other roof I just dried, fitted first, just make sure I was consistently going round at the right level right levels. The next part is this big tower bit. This is the bit that I want to dry. So not only is it glued here and here, it's all glued around the edges, it's still drying here. So I'm gonna put some weight on it. Well, actually, I'm just gonna push it to my paint station. Um, so the edge of it is just putting the pressure on. And I can already see that it's gonna set nicely. Take your time with it. It's such a nice piece of scenery. I can't highlight how good it is. 
And if there's anything to go by, like the first bit, the Daka bunker, which I really liked, this is just a bigger version, um, and I've got bigger things to come next. So I'm looking forward to that. So I'm going to catch another night tomorrow if I can. I'll get the next thing done. And um, that'll be it, really. I mean, I've only already got the bunker to go. A um, couple of little bit of details, a couple of spikes, those sort of things, but I really just wanted to dry first. And this is sometimes a problem with MDF stuff. If you compare it to plastics, the plastics, you use your plastic glue or even super glue. Um, I don't recommend super glue, but you know, definitely the plastic glue. In a couple of minutes, it's done, it's dried, it's solid. And you know, where the MDF, yes, you know, it's an absorbent wood. And date and PVA glue is wet, so it's going to absorb some of it, and that's the reason why you have to leave it to time to take to dry. Hence, why some most MDF kits are cheaper than the, the the plastic kits for that inconvenience. But I rate this better for quite a lot of GW plastic kits because there is so much detail on it there's nothing I've seen on the market that is this level of detail for orc scenery I mean even with the orc stuff coming out I've not seen any dedicated orc scenery which is I think Games Workshop's missed on a the market there because they've got some beautiful um, Imperium stuff Mechanicum, the pipes the the, the Knights, you know, Sanctuary Port thing that does quite good stuff in game, but you've got a waste of turn shooting, any waste of turn not shooting. Anyway, but there's nothing on the market that's orc dedicated scenery. Where this is, it is really good, really solid. It's weighty, which you want on scenery. You don't need a base with it, so it can just plomp on any type of scenery. Uh, myself, I think this is going to go on um, more of a town derelict, blown up imperial town that's now just been taken over by orcs. So that very Dawn of War, Dawn of War Two esque feel um, the York buildings are, and that's what they look like actually. They really do. I've not even seen thought of that before, but the Dawn of War one and two orc buildings this is it um so yeah i'm gonna leave it dry it's quite late here so catch you in the morning well for you guys blink and next part of the video's up hi so progress so far on the orc barracks now if you can see just to my right it does look a little bit taller now, in the previous part, I said I wouldn't stick to tower on. When building, I'll show you for me easier. This tower, um, struggle with this bit staying on properly because the floor, the connecting floor parts. So you've got the strut, as it sends, then the panel goes on top. There's a bit of wood that sticks further up um, than. The others, and it, the idea is to add a slant to it, so you know it's all key, it's, you know, not always going to be even and that sort of stuff. Just to add to that effect, but by looking at it, I was like, do you know what? I think it needs to be glued, but also for storage, take it off if you want to, if you're not carrying it around and things like that. For me, I often like having everything done, everything built. The only thing I will say is probably painting behind in there is probably going to be a pain but because I think I'm going to spray it a, a base colour anyway that will highlight most of that up and I think I will do, do another spray or another layer of a type of metallic bronzy rusty type spray I don't, I'm not too entirely sure what colours I'm going to use but those two sprays it will, add, it will cover the detail in there and then I'll dry brush up in parts of the sections so this part might be wood um, other parts of metal, you know, it's a real contrast in different materials that orcs would have used. 
So the last two stages for me was building this nice little vent thing that's got a little bit of 3D element onto it. Still that little face on there. And then building the detail of of this sort of extra level watchtower esque onto onto this piece of scenery, onto the barracks. I really, really did, did enjoy it. Took me a couple of days to build just because of drawing time. It's something you're just going to have to be patient with and sort of plan ahead. Um, it's one of the key key reasons why MDF scenery is important. You know, you just can't get it done with super glue. You do need to buy your time, especially if you want that stronger bond. And there is like wood super glue out there, but I don't rate it. Um, PVA glue is just as good, and I just use you know pound shop PVA, nice cheap brushes. But well, say cheap, actually I'm using normally use cheap brushes, but I'm using the Games Workshop brushes that I got from Conquest One because I picked up five of them. And yes, I know I picked up five of them, but that's because I wanted fifteen incessors. It wasn't for to sell on. Uh, for me, the paint I use quite a lot. I love the gold, I love the blue, and black, obviously, you're always going to need. But for me, it was the 15 intercessors. I really wanted a squad of those, which I think are going to go into a Crimson Fisk. Fisk? It's because I watched their Devil tra trailer today, that's why. Um, this Crimson Fist um, style of army. Um, got two Redemptor Dreadnoughts. Um, to go in there, and I'm going to put three predators, intercessors, and loads of sort of like uh, vanguards and stuff like that in Razorbacks. You know, so it was just a real themey, non competitive, nice, fun list, but still with a little bit of bite. But anyway, get back to this. Um, I really rate it. I do think it's, it's a lot better than the DACA Bunker you know, for what it needs to be. It's a lot more, even though they're rated moderate the same, when you start getting used to it, yeah, definitely, I became quicker and quicker to build it. The start process is a lot of components. The final part of this was the ladder. I'm sticking the ladder to, I think that was piece 121. 121. So bear in mind, you've got your normal MDF kits. There's 121 pieces in this building. So you need to take your time with it. I really, really enjoyed it. I really rate it. Description of how you're going to get one, the links and stuff like that from Tabletops Next. It's all in the description. Please check it out. They're doing fantastic. They you know, by supporting us and watching our videos means that we can get con get the products like this out to you. Um, I personally love it. I, can't, I couldn't rate it any better. I think the detail, the element of Dawn of War esh, and I've mentioned it before. The fact is a big chunky bit of scenery as well. I will do a size comparison video of when I've got um, probably my next my next um, video of them all you know I have three pieces of scenery and you can see the comparison between all three and um, so I might build something bigger next time um, and then scale down again I'm not too sure yet and the same model will be used throughout and then you can see it all in one well I really hope you enjoy it check out all the affiliation pages for up-to-date photos and things like that and um, also you got a Facebook um, as well but also Instagram I'm constantly updating on Instagram with new photos um, and just little things for thoughts for the day sort of thing uh, me and James are using that so ha check it out and apart from that thanks for watching wherever you are in the world make it a good one and happy your being